kite flying or gudabarambazi in Afghanistan has been going on for more than a hundred years. It is a outdoor sport that many consider to be an art form. The kites cost from 2,000 Afghanis, just a few cents, for tiny children's kites, to 100,000 Afghanis, less than two dollars, for large kites usually handled by experienced flyers. It is frequently enjoyed during the weekends because Friday is considered a holiday in Afghanistan. Muslims take a day of rest and prayer on Friday, so students are off of school and they have a chance to fly kites. The most common place for flight kite competitions is in Shaman e Babrak, a park in northern Kabul. Young and old people from all over Afghanistan and Kabul city would gather there. Additionally, someone lay wagers on the fighting kites. The fight, or zhong as it is called, it is an ancient custom played in the winter and autumn. Afghanistan's cold climate with strong winds make it perfect for the competition. The object of the game is to use the wire of your kite to cut the wire of your opponent's kite and set it free. It is a two-person affair, as one person, the shakagura, holds the wooden spool around which the wire is wound. The second person, called the gudabaran baz, or kite flyer, controls the movement of the kite in the air. Then, at the end, each neighborhood crowns its own sharti, or kite fighting champion. However, it is a dangerous sport, as many people get injured on rooftops by chasing free kites or forget about the ground when battling. Some people's hands are cut by the kite lines like steel wires, although the kids think the cuts are like a champion's glorious wounds. To make the string, glass is finely ground and combined with an adhesive mixture to make a thick paste. Then, the wire is coated with a paste to make it strong and sharp. After it is dry, the wire is wound around the spool. Kite fighters often wrap a piece of leather around their fingers to protect themselves from the wire. Kabul is filled with shops selling all manner of kites and related supplies. There are about 500 to 2,000 kites sold every day in each shop. During the war in 1996 to 2001, the Taliban regime banned kite flying in the belief that such pastimes were un-Islamic. If they found out someone was selling kites, they would come and destroy the kites, spools, and other things. Additionally, if they find out who the owner was, they would imprison them. If you flew a kite, the Taliban would beat you and would break the spool and tear the kite up, Karim, a 12-year-old boy, recalled. The fall of the Taliban meant the Afghans could again fly kites without fear of punishment. Many Afghans have returned to the pastime with vengeance.